Hey guys, welcome back to Obsessed With Videos. And I had a very Merry Christmas yesterday. And I got a lot of presents. Almost all of them were films. M most of them were films. And that's exactly what I'm going to show in this update. All the films that I got. I got about... N for Christmas, for this update, there will be 19 films. One of them is a DVD... Nine of them are standard Blu-rays, and the other nine are 4K Blu-rays. And one of them's a steelbook, by the way. Let's get started with the DVD. This is the Christmas update of 2021, by the way, as you probably know. The DVD is not what you would expect. Well, sometimes in my updates, you don't really know what films I get until the update comes out. But this one's quite a weird one, one that I wouldn't often consider getting. And it was one that I ended up getting as a Christmas present. The festive film collection of The Twelve Dogs of Christmas and Twelve Dogs of Christmas 2, The Great Puppy Rescue. Now, this Christmas present wasn't for me, but rather my dog. Because whenever she's in front of the TV and she sees dogs moving on the TV, I think she goes near the TV and barks because she thinks that they're stuck inside the TV while well, it's actually just the TV playing them. I guess this DVD was just this DVD was kind of a joke present for Ray, but we'll keep it. The, the dog's called Ray by the way after Star Wars, after the character from Star Wars. We've had for, for we've had her for 5 years. We've had her since September 2016. So it's been over 5 years now since we've had since we've had her. Anyway, this is a release from Signature Entertainment from, I believe it was 2012 or 2013 or 2014, maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is a release with the older Signature Entertainment logo, the one that was also used on the Disney knockoffs like Fantastic Force and Sky Force in 2013 and stuff. This DVD, so this DVD probably came out around the same time as those two, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, there's the discs themselves. And now onto the Blu-rays. The first one is The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. The film was originally supposed to come out in, I think it was August 2020, before the pandemic came in. But due to COVID, it ended up originally being delayed a year later to August 2021. But then it was moved up to June 2021 after Free Guy took over its place, which was another Ryan Reynolds film. Saw this, saw this at the cinema back in July and it was a good film. I enjoyed watching it. I'm hoping to watch the first one at some point in the future. I used to have it on Blu-ray a couple of years ago, but then I sold it. I'm planning to buy it again on either 4K or Blu-ray sometime in the future. Lionsgate release came out back in September. One of the first Lionsgate releases we've got to have the new age rating as well. The first ones I've, One of the first ones I've got. Probably the first one I got. Co-production between Lionsgate and Millennium Media, just like with the first one. And many of Millennium Media's films have been co-produced with Lionsgate, like the Has Fallen films and the Expendables films. Both of which are due to get sequels in the coming years, like with Night Has Fallen and The Expendables 4. There's an advert for Stars Play, which I think you can get through Amazon. And there's the disc for Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Not THE Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, but just Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. The next Blu-ray is In the Heights, based on the musical by Lin-Manuel Miranda, the creator of Hamilton, and John M. Chu, the director of Crazy Rich Asians. Originally, this film was scheduled for release in, like, June or July of 2020, but due to the pandemic, it got delayed a year earlier, a year later, should I say, to June 2021 where it had a simultaneous release on HBO Max in the US, but a, a, an exclusive theatrical release over here in the UK because we don't have HBO Max. 
As I mentioned, a release from, from Warner Brothers. I think this came out back in September as well. I haven't seen this film yet, but I might give it a watch in the future. There's an advert for the In The Heights soundtrack, and there's the disc itself. Rated PG in the UK, but 12 in Ireland. Next one is People Just Do Nothing Big in Japan based on the BAFTA-winning BBC series. I think this film was also originally scheduled for 2020, but was delayed to 2021. Although they could have released it in cinemas in the UK in 2020, because cinemas were open in the summer of 2020, but it was what it was, and it was probably for the best to have them compete against the bigger releases that are around at that time, like, well, Free Guy and stuff like that. This is a release from Universal, distributed by Warner Brothers. And I don't think I've got any of any other Warner distributed Universal films this year. So what's probably what will be featured in this update will be the first of which that I buy. And since Warner started distributing the Universal titles, not much has changed on the covers. Well, I think they've changed the cases to what Warner's been recently using on their Blu-rays. And they've taken away the category number from the spine and put it on the back. Other than that, though, not much has changed for them. There's the disc itself. No Irish rating on the disc, by the way, for some reason. The next one is another Universal release, but one that ended up going to Sky Cinema, Promising Young Woman. Originally scheduled for theatrical release, I think it was April of 2020, but COVID struck and the film ended up getting delayed in the US to Christmas 2020, but in the UK it faced more delays. First, a February release date, and then since the pandemic really screwed up cinemas during that time, Universal had no choice but to give, but to send this film to Sky Cinema. Well, they could have waited until cinemas reopened, but it was their choice. And they didn't do a simultaneous release like what they've been doing in the US with Peacock on some of their films, like Halloween Kills, The Boss Baby 2, and what they are planning to do with Jennifer, Lope Jennifer Lopez's Marry Me in February next year. This one just ended up going to Sky Cinema straight in the UK, due to the pandemic. As I mentioned, Universal release in association with Sky Cinema. And as I mentioned, Sky Cinema is kind of like the UK version of Peacock. Although I think Peacock is due to come in the UK at some point. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it's not just Universal that's been selling their films to Sky Cinema. I think Studio Canal and Lionsgate have been doing the same for some of their films. But Sky Cinema is partially owned by Universal because they're both Comcast companies. This one came out back in August and People Just Do Nothing Big in Japan came out near the end of November. Disc itself. Next one is an older release. Prince Purple Rain. I think the film came out originally in 1984, but... The Blu-ray release from Warner is from 2016. And since we got it quite, quite recently, it comes in one of those new cases, which seems to be the case for a lot of Blu-rays that you get new nowadays, even if they are older titles. Disc itself with the original 2016 disc. And as you could tell, it had the original 2016 cover. Next one is another more recent one, which came out back in November. Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. Originally scheduled for theatrical release in October 2020, this film faced a few delays, including one to... I think this film before the pandemic was originally supposed to come out in March, but that was way before the pandemic. But then before the pandemic, it got delayed to October. And then 
due to the pandemic, it got delayed a year later originally to October of 2021. But then at near the start of 2021, it got pushed back to July for a summer release. Although in the UK, it came out in August. Film stars Henry Golding, who also starred in Last Christmas alongside Amelia Clark. This is a Snake Eyes is a release from Paramount and MGM, distributed by Elevation Sales, which I think is a joint venture between Lionsgate and Studio Canal. This is also one of the first Hasbro films to be produced by Entertainment One since Hasbro bought Entertainment One in 2019. Although I think for the foreseeable future, Entertainment One is not going to self-distribute these films in the UK. I think it's going to still be Paramount or whoever is distributing that will still hold the rights. There's the disc itself with the coloured age ratings, which is what Paramount's been doing since the new age ratings came in. This is also one of very few films that Paramount has released theatrically during the pandemic. The other ones that I can think of that they did were Paw Patrol the Movie, which was also released in August, and A Quiet Place Part 2, which was released in June. And as for Clifford the Big Red Dog, that was from Paramount in the US, but I think Entertainment One co-distributed it theatrically, although they were the main distributor for that film in the UK. So it's likely that Entertainment One through Warner and Universal will handle the home media rights for that film when it gets released on DVD and or Blu-ray in this country. Next one is The Crude's A New Age, which I think faced a lot of delays to the point where it ended up being released in July of 2021 in the UK in cinemas, despite having a December 2020 US theatrical release. And... As the film in the UK was released theatrically with a 2 in the title, the Blu-ray release does not have that, although I think Universal did the same thing. I think that Universal is going to be correcting this error when they release The Boss Baby 2 on Blu-ray in this country in January. Also, The Croods 2 comes with two all-new exclusive shorts and a colour in sloth mask, which I won't bother using. Universal and DreamWorks release, although... On the spine, they have the Universal logo rather than having the DreamWorks logo, an error that they also had on Trolls World Tour last year. But at least they managed to fix, they managed to fix it and are managing to fix it with Boss Baby 2 and Spirit Untamed. Distributed by Warner, Warner Brothers Home Entertainment, just like with Promising Young, Young Woman and People Just Do Nothing Big in Japan. Although it does have the DreamWorks logo on the back, like with Trolls World Tour. There's the mask and there's the disc itself, which doesn't have any age ratings on it for some reason. But it does have the logos on the disc. The next one is the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run. A year after I got Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water. Although the first Spongebob movie doesn't have a Blu-ray release in this country because Paramount often neglect their older Nickelodeon titles and just put them on Netflix for people to view in HD. But at least they managed to give this a Blu-ray release in the UK, even though it was originally released on Netflix. This ended up being a Netflix original in the UK during, due to the pandemic, although it was released theatrically in Canada and on Paramount Plus in the US earlier this year. As I mentioned, this is a Paramount release. This came out back in November, and Crew's A New Age came out in October, if you, were on, if you were wondering. This is a film from Paramount Animation, and also Nickelodeon Movies and Media Rights Capital. And distributed by Elevation Sales. And there's the disc itself. As for Paramount Animation's recent film, Rumble, which came out as a Paramount Plus exclusive in December, I'm not sure when that will be released in the UK because it could either be sold to Netflix, Amazon, or maybe even have a theatrical release. We'll just have to wait and see.
We never know. Anyway, the disc, just like with Snake Eyes and all of Paramount's recent releases, have the age ratings in colour. There's the disc itself, again. Next one is another older, is an older Blu-ray release. The original 1961 or 1962, uh, 1961, should I say, version of West Side Story. I'm not sure what I'll do about the new version of West Side Story by Steven Spielberg, whether I'll go see it theatrically or wait till it comes out on either home media or on Disney Plus, because it's part of that 45 day theatrical window that Eternals, Shang-Chi and Free Guy had. Although I did manage to see Free Guy at the cinema and Eternals as well. But I might watch Shang-Chi on Blu-ray since my brother bought it at some point soon. Anyway, this version of West Side Story is an MGM and Fox release from, I believe, 2011. And when I opened the Blu-ray, I got a bit of a surprise that it came with two discs. There's disc one and there's disc two. And that's it for the standard Blu-rays. Now let's get on with the 4K Blu-rays. The first one is Fast and Furious 9, The Fast Saga. Contains two cuts of the film, versions of the film, director's cut and the original version of the film. The film was originally supposed to come out in May of 2020, but as you know, it ended up getting delayed a year, a year later to June of 2021 due to, you know what? Due to the you know what? Or, or, as I've mentioned it during the update, COVID, the pandemic. This is a release from Universal, which came out back in October. Saw this film back in at uh, the cinema back in August, and I really enjoyed it. And is also one of the highest grossing films of this year, although the highest grossing film this year is definitely Spider-Man No Way Home. Anyway, there's the 4K disc for Fast and Furious 9, and there's the standard Blu-ray. Now, last year I got the first, uh, I, I got the second Frozen on 4K, but now, this Christmas, I've got the first one. 2013 film, but 2019 home media release from, well, it's obvious who released it, Disney. The Mouse House. Whatever you want to call it. But most people would refer to it as Disney. There's the 4K disc and there's the standard Blu-ray. The, ne the next few are going to be Disney releases that I'm going to show. And the next one is Pixar's Luca, which ended up becoming a Disney Plus exclusive, like with Sol. But they mentioned that... But at one point they did mention that Pixar's upcoming films like Ear and Turning Red, which are due to come out in 2022, will be theatrical releases. You just never know, though, because one of them could end up going to Disney Plus if the pandemic gets really bad. We'll just have to wait and see. But for now, they're planning to release both Turning Red and Lightyear theatrically in both March and June of 2022. Hopefully they still go ahead with those release dates. There's the 4K disc and there's the standard Blu-ray. The next one is 2016's Moana. Once again on Disney. Released, early, released on 4K earlier this year in about March. There's the 4K and there's the standard Blu-ray. The next one is not a Universal, uh, I mean, not a Disney release, which, and this one is James Bond No Time to Die from MGM and Universal. Also, it's got the newish logo for Universal Pictures Home Entertainment on there, which I think they started to using like late October on releases like Old and Spirit Untamed. And it's also an MGM release, as I mentioned. Also, I like the way that they've made the spine a bit different to most 
Universal releases to try and keep in with the Bond vibes that they've been using for the that MGM and Fox were using when they were together. I also like the artwork on the discs as well. There's the 4K disc and there's the standard Blu-ray. I think the artwork on both discs looks really good and it's an I thought it was an enjoyable film as well and a good conclusion to the Daniel Craig line of Bond films. Also, this is a two disc collector's edition, despite the fact that it just has the 4K and the Blu-ray disc. I guess that's what they meant by two discs. Despite the fact that the Blu-ray and DVD release have two discs, I guess, well, I guess, I don't know, but anyway, let's get on with the next film that I've got, which is a steelbook of Hugh Jackman's Reminiscence from Warner Brothers. And this is also a film co-produced by Film Nation Entertainment, Kilter Films and Michael DeLuca. And there's a letter from the director of the film, Lisa Joy, and there's the 4K Blu-ray, and there's the standard 4K, uh, I mean, I mean the standard Blu-ray, which is coloured in blue, like most of Warner's recent releases, but the 4K Blu-ray has, is in a darker shade of blue, a kind of greenish blue with a few lines on it. Probably to complement the artwork of the film. The next two are both, are also going to be Warner releases and they're part of a franchise, and they're part of a franchise. The first one is Space Jam, the first, the first one, with Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan. I used to have this film on VHS. Now I've seen the second one, but I haven't seen the first one yet, so I might give this a watch in the future. As I mentioned, a Warner Brothers release, came out back in July, July around the same time as its sequel came out in cinemas. The Warner Brothers Pictures logo on there is a little bit odd because they have the text below it rather than on that side, but hey-ho, it is what it is. The Blu-ray and 4K of the film was rated PG, but I think the DVD and VHS were rated U back when they were released. There's the standard Blu-ray, there's the 4K Blu-ray, which is coloured in orange, and the standard Blu-ray, which is coloured in blue. And the next one is its sequel, Space Jam, A New Legacy. I was just doing my American accent there, just like what I did with when I was showing Space Jam 1, but I'm back to my normal British accent now. Anyway, this is a Warner Brothers release, as I've mentioned, which came out back in October. Saw this film at the cinema when it came out back in July, and I think it's one of my favourite films of the year. It was just a really enjoyable film to watch, and I really enjoyed it. I might watch this film again at some point, along with its predecessor, which, when I watched my predecessor, when, when I watched the predecessor, I'll have seen it for the first time since I don't think I've ever seen it before, but I have seen this one. Anyway, inside there's an, a leaflet which advertises Warner Animation Group's next film, DC League of Super Pets, which is currently due for release on May 20th, 2022, and stars Dwayne jo the comedic duo of Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart as the main characters, which are Batman, Superman's dog and Batman's dog, respectively. On the back, you get a colouring sheet of Bugs Bunny. And you also get, and inside, you also get an advert which advertises Looney Tunes stuff, such as the cartoons on Boomerang and the merchandise that you can get from Amazon. There's the 4K disc, which is in a reddish orange colour and the Blu-ray disc which is in a darker shade of blue compared to the other Warner releases that I've been showing. And the final film to top off this update of Christmas 2021 is 
Disney's The Little Mermaid. This has the same kind of artwork that my 4K Blu-ray of The Lion King had, which I got back in Christmas 2018, three years ago. I think this 4K Blu-ray was released in the US in 2019, but it didn't come out in the UK until earlier, in, until March 20 of this year. I think it was Disney's laziness over their older titles, but it's good that they've managed to finally catch up on that. Anyway, you know who releases, as I mentioned. The film was from 1989, the first film of the Disney Renaissance, but in the UK it counts as a 90s film because it was released in the UK almost a year earlier compared to its US release, and it was released in the UK in October of 1990. Anyway, there's the standard 4K and there's the... There's the 4K Blu-ray and there's the standard Blu-ray. Now that's it for this Christmas update of 2021. The OWV Awards will be on New Year's Eve, but I don't think an update, I don't know if an update will proceed. It'll probably be ju just be the Obsessed with Video Award, uh, the OWV Awards. Unless I manage to get a cinema ticket before then, but I don't know how likely that is. But you might have noticed this year that I haven't done any Wilfred movie posters. The reason for that is is because I've been taking a break from that because I've been focusing on other things. But hopefully in 2022, I'll get back to that. Maybe not at the start of the year, but maybe later on in the year. Just have to wait and see. Anyway, that's it. That's it for this update and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Hope you're excited for the OWV Awards, by the way. See you later.